Okay, we have left our discussion with the notion of representation. What do you think re representation is? A few moments ago, I were counting individuals. One, two, three, four, five, six, etc. Okay. Here, by representation, we mean a certain some relationship between this one and that person. Is that so? Then you are the one, you are the two, you are the three. So when I say two, three, four, okay, two, three, four, each corresponding to a different individual, okay. So she knows right now that she is to be called as one. So one, tell me, how are you today? Great, you see. So one here stands for the individual. Eh? In other words, it is in a representative relationship with that individual. Huh? This is an interesting, actually, the term representation, you know, representation. Uh, implies that something already present has been invoked to presence once again. Something already present has been invoked once again to presence in it is perhaps absence. Okay? This is why you need representation. Okay? If you remember the Aristotelian discussion for instance uh, you know Empiria, Empiria, Empiria and Empirias are acquiring representative forms in the memory okay now they are allocating themselves according to certain principle of difference and similarity and so on and so forth okay so which means that the thing to be represented is not in the memory that's why you need to represent it huh? so it is not present there therefore you invoke its presence by representing it in its absence. Okay. Therefore, such an understanding, interpretation of representation, I said that the main basic problem with that original sentence, what it was, I don't remember right now, okay, was rather in the notion of representation. And the notion of representation implies that something present already there in other words if you like given represented with a certain symbol okay this meaning of symbol here is that okay something presenting in this order of things and i am representing that something through a symbol meaning that in another order of things okay for instance, if social relations are among the individuals constituting a social whole, okay, I am representing these social relations in language and the, in the interconnected web of the, the, web of the theoretical concepts. Huh? Okay, so they are in the social life, social reality, these are in the book. Okay? in my theoretical approach. So my theoretical approach is nothing other than a different series than the series of the social relations constituting the social reality, what we call social reality, okay? So they appear there, they come to presence there. I invoke their presence in another language, if you like, okay? So what's at stake in both of the cases? The very possibility of presenting of something as something actually is that the series gotta be there. Okay? So it is the series of relations that 
presents a particular set of relations as a particular set different from the others okay just like similar to this I represent that particular set of relations as a different set of relations okay in another system okay in, a, in another series for instance people leave those things by through interacting with each other I write about them okay I talk about them and write about them so I am invoking those relations in language okay well they are invoking producing those relations in their actions okay so actions social actions their social actions constituting a series of actions okay my representation taking place in a series of representations okay so theory of representation then establish a relationship between two orders or series whatever those series are it's not important okay or uh, it takes place between two orders and series in the form of invoking one element in one of the series one element actually belonging to another series okay for instance in my own psychic being I have different states of feeling okay fear anger love etc 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 now as you can see they constitute a series hmm? but these feelings as I leave them through are not the same with my expressions with my invoking those feelings in language calling that right now I feel love okay they are not the same I am representing that feeling belonging to this series of my feelings okay in language okay another series in another series I'm invoking it is presence in this another series but this such an approach the problem is that such an approach to the question of interpretation assumes that okay the elements of the series are have already been distinguished from each other in other words what we call this as given they are given okay? that my feeling of love or my feeling of hatred are given entities in my psychic being and I am now trying to give an expression to that feeling in my language okay? and trying to establish a correspondence relationship between one pre-given entity uh, and another pre-given entity the notion of love or the word love in language and my feeling of love in my psychic being okay such an approach assumes that they both are pre-given however this is exactly the problem heart of the problem indeed if they were really given we wouldn't have any problem at all okay everything would be crystal clear and we would find no difficulties in arriving at an agreement a strong consensus on what truth is okay the only diversion from truth could be possible in case of an error ignorance or whatever okay but since this is not the case since the truth cannot be pinned down that easily then it means that we have to take a serious consideration of the alternative approach okay and what the alternative approach says remember all this starts with structuralism okay 
and that very simple something, okay? Uh, that very simple statements, or two statements, perhaps. In language, there are only differences without positive terms. This was perhaps the first statement. And the second statement was that the value of the sign, remember, is the difference of that sign from the other signs in a signifying chain. Perhaps we can add a third statement to this uh, by emphasizing the arbitrary character of the relationship within the sign between the signifier and the signified. Now, let's take a closer look at this. Now, the proposition was that, the original starting proposition was that, okay, without language, meaningful thought was impossible. We don't know if any thought is possible at all, okay? But this, either such a proposition, either forces us to conclude that prior to language there can't be no thought at all, or only thought is possible, but there can't be no meaningful thought at all, okay? Whatever it is. Now, the position is this. Let's assume that, let's assume that prior to language, there is a possibility of thought, okay? Let's not start by simply denying the possibility of thought antecedent to language, okay? Let's assume that there is still a possibility of thought prior to language. But thought, thought, this thought is meaningless simply because the intervals or the punctuations or if you like the gaps, the gap I was talking about in, at the mirror stage as well, has not been introduced into it. That's why it's meaningless. It does not have a particular shape, so to speak. Why? Simply because the punctuation, the intervals, the gaps in that thought would, could only be introduced into it in the form of some signifying chain. Whether this signifying chain could be the language right now I am speaking or any other language or traffic signs, the system of traffic signs. It does not make much difference. The crucial point, this is why it's called the language, simply because this, the crucial point is that the marks, the places separated with gaps or intervals should constitute a chain, okay? In other words, by chain, system, what we mean is this. They are all interrelated with each other, okay? So, no gap can stand there by its own self, okay? The, gap, the presence of a gap always calls the presence of another gap, okay? And to constitute as to constitute a series of gaps. Therefore, counting turns out to be a meaningful activity. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? Even though, as you can see, counting diminishes the crucial differences among the counted items. Here in this address, uh, Lacan would say that actually counting is for counting or adding up of different entities. So, count, you know, in arithmetics, in high school, he says this, Okay, high school, you have been told that, he has been told as well that, okay, in addition, you, one cannot add arithmetical operations, not only addition, uh, among different entities, different items. So you cannot add up, for instance, pears with apples. Hmm? On the contrary, he would insist that actually the very peculiarity of counting, mark, okay, is to eliminate these differences and make the apples and pears countable, edible together, okay? That's why I can count different individuals, each being qualitatively different from the other in a series, okay? Each in its own uniqueness, counting allows me to overlook all those differences and reduce them to the same, identical with each other, okay? One is equal to another one, okay? And each counted entity is nothing else than n plus one. As you can see, in each case, it is the one. 
which is identical with itself, stands there. Okay? So, <laughs> let's take a look at language, what happens. You know, Saussure explains that <laughs> this sign is consisted of two closely interrelated and knit out parts. One is the signifier, the other is the signified. Now we ask ourselves what signifier is. Practically speaking, a signifier in its material entityness, okay, is a sound. Technically called in linguistics is a phoneme. And unit of sound. Okay. And it has been told that signifier has an arbitrary relationship with this signified, or if you like, what it signifies, or if you like, what the sign in it is unity of the signifier and the signified signifies. Okay. <coughs> but there is a problem here. We said that prior to language, even if we can accept that thought can exist, the thought could not be the location of meaning simply because it lacks any punctuation, any holes in it. Okay? So it means that actually when we are dealing with the sign, the real case Okay, I am dividing this, this separation, okay? Now, an anamorphous flux. Into which it is not possible to discern any meaning as different from other meanings, okay? And what about the signifier? The phoneme. Now, Saussure analysis has already shown that in his PhD dissertation, has already shown that, okay, actually it is impossible to discern certain sounds in language. This sheer possibility of discerning a given sound, say A, A, okay passes through relating this sound with all the other sounds in the language. Okay? So when I ask you what is A, how should we pronounce A? Okay? How would you pronounce A? Okay? You would answer me by making comparisons with other. For instance, when I say that the true pronunciation of A is in it's not it's difficult for me to give an example with an A, but A will do, A, the initial letter of my name, okay? For instance, Alma. What is this sound? Is it an A or A or something in between? Alma. You know, some people in our country pronounce that letter in this way. Hmm? So they hear that sound in that way and repeat that sound in that way. But what is that letter stands for? What sound? Hmm? What do you think? And the very possibility of identifying this Alma as A, okay, emerges only out of comparing this sound with other sounds in the language. That's the problem. Okay? This means that the signifier itself, even though language is there, the signifier itself is not that readily given something. Okay? What's crucial here is not what a particular signifier is, but 
the system of punctuation in a given universe of sounds. Uh, which sound stands for what? Hmm? You cannot differentiate. Interestingly, when you hear them in this manner, you wouldn't be able to differentiate them from each other either. Okay? This shows us that the sounds themselves, the signifiers themselves, are not readily given. This means that they need to be produced as well. Okay? They need to be produced and that's why Lacan emphasized the importance of the letter. Okay? Writing and inscribing a sound in it is association with a particular grammar is that which fixes a sound. Okay? This is why in language where no alphabet had been introduced, you would come across with many variations of the same sound in the mouths of different people. Okay? When you introduce the alphabetical letter into the picture, however, you will see that the sounds tend to be fixated. Okay? So, the introduction of the letter then has much to do with the fixation of the sounds, phonemes. Okay? And the letter for Lacan, don't forget, stands in the name of the father over there. How this relationship occurs. Okay, okay then, originally, then, it, the signifier is no different from the thoughts as well, which floats in a rather amorphous fashion without any possibility of being punctuated. Okay? Uh, before I end up this session, please do written remind, remind to return back to this relationship of the letter and father and its effects on the formation of the signifier. Okay? some five or ten minutes earlier uh, before our end of our time. Okay? So, this is the picture. Now, this actually, what liquidifies such an interpretation is what liquidifies the seemingly unproblematic formulation of structuralism. You know, these three formulations. They were seemingly, you had a relationship. Well, you are, you are talking about the value of the sign. It's quite easy. Why? How? No. It's quite easy. You have that signifying chain here. Okay? And uh, all you have to do is to compare uh, and find out the differences of that sign okay, from the other signs in that signifying chain. Well, it's quite easy no. to determine what a sign signifies. Yeah, exactly. But well, I'll come to this in a more detailed fashion, I hope. Okay? And he says unconscious is structured like language. Okay? It is surprising and seemingly completely in total contradiction to the Freudian conceptualization of unconscious, you know, based upon primarily that instinctual biological dark id. And you can expect that the it is prone to produce always the unexpected. And it is our innermost, innermost being. But Lacanian analysis will show us that actually what we call our innermost being is exactly our external most being. Okay? It is therefore structured like language. Okay? It uses language and structured language. And uh, I'm trying to approach this question in this analysis indeed. Okay? <coughs> How it happens to come. Okay? Now, then <coughs> we have also said that this relationship is arbitrary. By meaning that, I warn you again and again. In later years, if you'll continue with your studies in this university, simply because we will come across 
relate in relation to this question and you'll repeat me that okay this arbitrariness is a function of its being constructed and constructed unfortunately you will say without even knowing it without even noticing that by some certain fucking subject okay now the whole argument the whole crack of the argument is this this is arbitrary but not in the sense that it is dependent upon any choice or activity of the subject okay in other words the speaker a subject of the sentence can not do anything at all with this relationship okay it's arbitrary but historically and socially produced arbitrary so since you are neither history nor society itself okay this means that you cannot change it okay this means that you through your subjective action cannot construct anything at all you are somebody else say another subject a political party say a KP say somebody else some hidden agency dark forces uh, conspiring doing this or that okay and causing the society people thinking this or, or acting this or that way okay no this is not to mean that it means either that for instance nationalism is not the making of some certain segment of the society as well okay it is it means that it is historically constructed it is not constructed by some certain subject rather if you like the relationship is reverse it is historical construction is exactly that which produces the subject in an incomplete manner okay you now don't forget the subject is no longer considered to be can no longer considered to be as some given entity okay it's itself something produced and we are dealing with the processes of its production here okay so that's why this discussion is so crucial for any sociological study it's about the constitution of the all those things we take before us as our objects for study okay father for instance mother for instance family for instance child for instance that's why giving the proper name Lacan argues giving the proper name to the child locates the child in language in language in language which is expressing that relations of kinship so there are two languages in other words okay the relations of kinship constituting uh, one language while the other language that we speak that we write actually representing it and through the immediacy of representing it introducing these relationships into the psychic uh, constitution of the child child meaning that the child's coming to recognize him or herself as a particular person what does it mean this as a particular person means not as my father not as my mother not as my brother not as my sister but as me okay this is the meaning of calling oneself as particular individual okay so then we need the formation or introduction of the holes punctuations into this okay according to Lacan the introduction of the holes is a problem here related with that originary desire for unity which always falls short in other words originating from that lack okay a desire for unity which can never satisfy itself in life okay producing a hole a gap a punctuation and cutting causing cuts 
constitution of the cuts in that primordial hole to which we refer as the system of sound okay as well as and in corresponding fashion corresponding in an arbitrary fashion with this thoughts but another point is this you know in Sasurian terminology they signified usually thought to be a certain idea that the speaker may have in mind for instance you know the sound tree or the writing of my writing of tree on the board is something else the material aspect therefore uh, is the signifier part of the sign well the thought I think when I'm writing this okay say assuming roughly some shape or decorated with certain sets of predicates okay <laughs> is the concept but the problem was that you know there were two problems one problem I will mention and pass away okay the problem of the reality okay language sense you know remember structure one of the structural premises language has its own autonomy from reality which means that what rep language represents or shows as it represents okay is not the reality we are not talking about this we are not talking about the real tree here okay we are talking about the relationship of our thought tree and the word tree okay <laughs> such a relationship may easily mislead us if we take it as if both of the components are pregnant now the punctuation had been introduced into the signifier therefore to, according to Lacanian thinking signifiers acquires a certain priority in relation to the constitution of the meaning thought actually this has been seen already for instance in our earlier discussion in under structuralism uh, when we ask ourselves how many whites are there you know the Eskimo having uh, 16 different words for white uh, Oich referring to a different shade uh, while we are having Turks having uh, say five or six different words okay so the presence of the words presence of the marks whose determination is according to their own relationship with each other okay producing the determination of the thoughts hmm? so there are as many as shades of white as long as my language allows me to refer to them okay other whites turn out to be unthinkable for me for instance the remaining how many 11 whites of the Eskimo remains unthinkable for me okay so it means that the remaining 11 shades of white do not exist in the punctuation of my thinking and do not come into presence in the form of a concept in my thinking hmm? great great then therefore leather acquires a specific position in the fixation fixing down but we will see that this fixing down is always relative and never complete okay apart from the problem of the introduction of the new signs into the existing signifying chain if the problem was only this then it was quite easy to solve it okay but the problem is rather lays somewhere else okay and this somewhere else is this this arbitrary relationship between the signifier and the signified can never be fixed in other words 
what the signifier signifies is not the signified. Okay? Therefore, Lacan will bring with a, you know, his uh, strange formulations of relations with such kind of formulation. This, this is capital S and this is small s in the italic. Okay. Now this means that actually the subject of language, this S stands for subject of language, okay, this stands for the one who speaks. Okay. The subject of language, you know, uh, operates or shows itself only, is capable of showing itself only in the momentary identification of the speaker misleading at the same time and never complete identification of the speaker with the subject of the language. You know, in Turkish language we say ben. That ben, that personal pronoun, okay, I, that personal pronoun, the identification of the speaking me right now, okay, with that personal pronoun in the language. Okay. Immediately locating me in the symbolic structure at a particular place, as you see. Okay. However, the second one is the speaker, stands for the speaker. Okay, not the I in the sentence but the one who speaks, okay? It stands for the speaker. Therefore, while you can see the subject corresponding to the symbolic structure that the child acquires, internalizes from the society in the process of language acquisition, okay? This, this is not a something permanent. This shows itself in the act of utterance, or if you like, enunciation. And persists as long as the discourse continues. Okay? So as long as the actual speech act takes place. And then disappears again. To appear somewhere else, but not in an identical form. Each and every utterance tells us, therefore, calling for another little s. Okay? Each and another discourse calling for another little s. Me at that time saying all those things, me at this time saying now all these things, etc. Okay? So this is the symbolic. But what about this? You know, the meaning will take place here. The meaning here is nothing else than uh, what I try to mean. Hmm? So, to be able to convey what I am trying to mean right now, I make use of the language. I locate myself in the language as the I of the sentence, subject of the sentence, and trying to convey you a certain meaning which I presuppose existing in the speaker. Me. In the innermost of me. Okay? The meaning is here. And I am trying to tell it through the medium of the social medium of language. And to be able to do so, I use that language with its social no longer belongs to me. The meaning while, however, remaining inside of me. Okay? So, the planes of existence of these two are not the same as you can see. And Lacan here in this relationship, this is why I draw this line here, refers to this as the bar. Okay? Here, the bar of the formula. Dividing the symbolic subject or subject of the statement from the subject of the enunciation, the actual speaker. Okay? <coughs> and the meaning, meaning is expected to be achieved okay, when this penetrates, the signifier penetrates into the 
heart of the speaking subject. But according to Lacan, this is the importance of this bar here. This is exactly what is impossible. Okay. Actually, therefore, this tiny little s is nothing else than this impossibility of meaning. Okay. Okay, last few minutes and I said that I'm going to return back to one particular question. What was it? Letter in the name of Father. Letter in the name of Father. Ah, okay, yeah. but no, it was not only that, it's in relation with something else was the point. Okay, as concluding remarks, I will not go any further in this. You can read the material. It's a very interesting material. And I hope that when you read it carefully, it will be rewarding. Okay? And many amb ambiguities will gradually, not suddenly, well, not suddenly, will disappear. As a uh, summary statement then, I can say that in the analysis, you cannot assume the pre-given existence of the subject as well as pre-given existences of the meanings. Okay? And if you are willing to penetrate into the character of these, what you need to do is to take a look at the system of relations in which they emerge. Okay? Now, this is exactly what we would call the decentering of the subject. Decentering of the subject having several meanings. Okay, first of all, it refers to the disintegration or destruction of that subject which is thought to be a given unity on the one hand. A given unity, this is very important. If it is not given, it has to be constituted. And it has to be constituted, it has to be constituted differently under within, or if you like in, to use the structuralist language, within different signifying chains. Okay? So, to be able to understand how different it is, one has to look at the character of the signifying chain and how it generates under particular circumstances, particular entities among which the subject turns out to be perhaps the most crucial one. Okay? So, next time, when you are going out in the field and taking other individuals before you as the subjects of the answers you are expecting from them, think once again. Okay?